Find out the value of your treasured treasures at KVIE's Antique Valuation Day in partnership with Clark's Auction Gallery. For your generous gift of $7 a month as an ongoing sustaining donor, we'll say thanks with Covell's Antiques and Collectibles Price Guide, updated for 2016. This book is the most thorough, colorful, and complete price guide available from your trusted name in antiques. You'll also receive the KVIE Viewfinder DVD, Best of Collectors, with our thanks. Or to experience the excitement of a live antique evaluation, join us for the 2016 KVIE Antique Valuation Day on Saturday, May 14. Contribute $10 a month as an ongoing sustaining donor to receive admission to the event and two items professionally evaluated by specialists from Clark's Auction Gallery or contribute $12.50 a month as an ongoing donor to receive three items professionally evaluated. Both ticket packages also come with a copy of the KVIE Viewfinder Best of Collectors DVD with our thanks. Space is limited, so call 1-800-270-6601 now to make a generous donation and reserve your space at KVIE's Antique Valuation Day. This is such a fun event every year. I'm Rob Stewart here with Rick Unruh from Clark's Auction Gallery. We're so excited to present our fourth annual Antique Valuation Day. So pick up the phones and get your tickets right now. Rick, how are you, my friend? Nice to see you, Rob. Nice to see Always you. Always a pleasure. Thanks for coming back. Oof, thanks for having me. Boy, us. did you bring some home runs today. I brought some nice things. Now, these are Picasso plates. Pablo Picasso. Say that. I did not even know that Picasso did plates. He did. Later in his life, in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, for about 25 years, uh, he was living in the south of France, Côte d'Azur, and uh, he decided, hmm, this is an interesting thing I haven't dabbled in, a medium that was new to him. Is it paint on a plate? It's a painted plate that's been glazed in a fire. Okay. okay? And it all comes from the same uh, pottery company, or workshop, we say, called Medora. All right. And Which one do you want to start with? Well, let's see. Should we go with the least expensive first? Sure. Why don't you pick which one you think is the least? Okay, well, oh, truth well. be told, you've already told me the prices, <laughs> so true. I can't, but I, I would have thought this one. Well, that one, you know, you would think because it's a little, you know, less shiny, less glossy. It's a different format, and it, but it actually is the oldest one from 1949, mm -hmm. and it actually is estimated at eighteen to $24,000. Eighteen to twenty-four thousand yeah, so dollars. Break that, you buy it. I'm sorry to say. Okay. It, <laughs> <laughs> so if you here's the back. This is what I want to show if we can show it, because it says Picasso right here on it. I, yeah. I just I couldn't believe it when I picked it up and I saw Picasso on there. Exactly, and that's the name of the uh, the the pottery shop that made it, Medora, right there. And so this is one of the early ones he was working on, uh, in a style as you can see evolved uh, through the years. Now. This one right here, we're going to lift it up a little bit. The plate in the front? Yeah, this is called uh, Hibou Brilliant. Okay, and Hibou, right of course, there, I believe. is uh, French for owl. Uh, this also has the same markings on the back. Uh, this was from 1955. And this one uh, has an estimated auction of $10,000 to $15,000. My goodness. Beautiful little piece. Now, you don't want to, you know, serve cheese and crackers on this one. You no. might want to put this on the this wall. This is not for the coffee table. Or on the shelf, yes. So what? where do you get that price? I mean... Well, there's collectors. I mean, Picasso is a uh, one of the most recognized artist names ever globally. In and the so, world. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, you ask anybody anywhere, they'll probably think, say, Picasso, maybe Warhol's second to mm -hmm. that. Um, and, you know, there's only a few of these made. Uh, you know, several hundred, it doesn't sound like a few, but that is not that many considering how many collectors there are that buy Picasso items. So this one's about eight to 10? Uh, 10,000 to 15,000. 10 000. to 15, how much is this one? Now this one is called Picador and Bull. I love this. From 1953. This one is a little less, okay. 6,000 to 9,000 dollars. Still quite valuable. And you know, two of these came from the same person in, in, in uh, Europe, and this one just came uh, locally from a, a collector uh, in Sebastopol, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. that, that's what I love, and Rose talked about that a minute ago, the local stories. And that's what I love so much about our Valuation Day, is we have so many local stories, oh, treasures yeah. that you find and uncover, and it's so fun to watch people's eyes light mm -hmm. up when you tell them what they've got. Yes, I mean, it's amazing when, you know, people find out what they have and they were like, oh, I've had this in my family forever and I can't believe this is worth that. Uh, thank you so much. What will, <laughs> for, for you and for also for people who are watching, what is the, what is the evaluation day like? What is the energy like? 
Well, uh, it's very energetic, actually, and it can be quite crowded. Um, every, we give everybody their, their time to evaluate everything, and sometimes that takes some more time. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, they're all lined up. They're, they're different categories. There's a decorative arts. There's jewelry, Asian art, and, of course, fine art, which is what I do. And, uh, yeah, everybody seems to have a good time. Okay. And we have a good time as well. It's, well, it's a long day, but, uh, you know, lots of smiles at the end of the day. Well, this is definitely fine art, and it is absolutely beautiful. We're going to toss things back over to Rose Froling. She's got uh, mm -hmm. some more information for us. We're going to spend more time with Rick during the program, but now we're going to check in uh, for you to make a call with your generous financial donation. And thanks. Very cool, Rick. one as well as the Picasso's comes with a fascinating story. Rick, tell us what was covering this beautiful painting. All right, well, you're, Derek is on next, but Derek uh, found this with a mirror in it. This is a Newcomb Macklin frame, and one of the things Meaning? That, which is a very, very expensive hand-carved frame that you wouldn't put a mirror in. Okay. So that is one of the telltale signs. And discovering something that might be wonderful is there could be something behind that mirror. And you knew because of the frame, the frame the tipped frame, you off? And then we looked at the back, we took the paper off, and then we saw there was a canvas underneath. Uh, and then we removed the mirror and voila, here we have this beautiful painting by an artist called Elliot Dangerfield. Now, if you look in the lower left corner, the signature's there, but you can't make that out at all. It's, it's, it's too dark to really exactly. see. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a dark brown signature on, on a kind of even a darker brown area. And we put it under a black light, which is illuminates all the, all the palettes in that area. And we were able to determine the signature from that. And this painting right here is six to $9,000 under a mirror. So I don't want anybody who's watching this time to go break their mirrors because <laughs> it's not a good idea. But we, if you have something that's you know behind a mirror, you want to bring it to the, the evaluation on the 14th, we'll be more than happy to take it out and take a look at it for you. Yeah, and also let's just flip this around because this gave a hint. You can see there's a canvas back here. So that was, like you said, don't go just ripping the mirrors off. I mean, there's a canvas behind here that gave you a tip when you took the framing paper off. Yes. And okay. the mirror would say, I mean, you know, why this all happened is it could be a very good story. Somebody was trying to uh, hide, hide the it. painting. <gasps> yes. Like, oh, wow. My goodness. So, I didn't even you know, think about that. Couldn't, you know, maybe it was just, uh, you know, didn't want somebody's brother or sister getting it over themselves mm -hmm. or who knows what the story is. But in any event, here so we are. Tell me, as people are looking around their homes or talking to their friends, what are the items that they should be identifying to bring for you and all of your experts to look at? Well, it all depends on what you have. I mean, if you have a nice piece of jewelry that was, uh, you know, you got inherited or, or just uh, you got as a gift, you can bring that because we have a jewelry specialist, Gary. Um, if you have um, anything that might be an Asian art piece, uh, you know, ivory is a tricky subject right now. There's various laws for it, but we can identify what it is and give you a value for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things out there. Uh, and I saw large things. Last year, there were some huge things brought in. I mean, it's oh, yes. not just small items, it's large things. All right, thanks. We'll be back with you shortly, <laughs> spending more time with our friends from Clars. Hey, Rose, thanks so much. And I'm here with Derek Torres from Clars Auction Gallery, who, one of our partners for the upcoming Antique Valuation Day. Derek, you've been here for all four years of this years. partnership. Yes. And we're glad you're back. Thank you for having me. All right, so, these are things, we have some things over here that are from our phone bank, and I brought these from my home, okay? Okay. So here's the deal. And this is what similar you could be doing to the evaluation day when you come on May 14th. I wanted to bring these to you because my grandmother had a set of these on her mantle in North Carolina. And when she died, I wanted them, but I didn't get them. Someone else in the family got them who should have gotten them. And so I went to an estate sale in my neighborhood um, you know, the nosy neighbor wanting to go in the house over the estate sale. And these were there for sale. And I right. thought, oh my gosh. And so I came back at the end of the day, they were still there and they'd been slashed down in price. And so I made an offer and got them. So my grandmother's said 1905 World's Fair at the bottom. Okay. Are these replicas? No, they're originals, but they're not what your grandmother had. Okay. So they're these are, of course, a pair of urns. Some of the most important urns were made by Sev and Royal Vienna, so they're continental hand-painted urns in this style. Mm -hmm. The higher, the more sought-after ones in the market, yours has spelter mounts, mm -hmm. which is basically pot metal. Okay. Uh, yours are molded pot metal. So I'm, I'm taking it those are <laughs> not, uh, not the higher end. <laughs> no, these were made for the middle class. You know, I mean, okay. there, there's decorative art for Perfect. every every 
price point. And these were, you know, at an auction environment today, they'd be four to six hundred. Oh, really? Right. Okay. Well, that's okay. We did, you don't know have paid for it? No. Guess. Four hundred. No. <laughs> I paid uh, either forty-five or fifty dollars. That's wonderful. I think I paid fifty dollars for them because there was a third. And I offered them fifty for these two. Very, so very. Four to You're a great shopper. I, I you have am a great shopper. eye. <laughs> Plus, they all right, yay! <laughs> all right, what do we have here? I see a Rolex. Well, I wanted to highlight watches because at our um, valuation event, Gary Crispino, our f um, fine jewelry appraiser, will be there. Oh, good. And we do quite well with watches. Mm -hmm. Watches do well, and um, they really should bring their timepieces up no or fine intended. jewelry. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to hold this up to this okay. camera right over here. This is a, a Rolex. You can always tell they're real by the sweeping hand, if I'm right. not mistaken. All right, so what are some of the pieces of jewelry that you've seen? Everything from costume to real, I would assume. Right, um, and as far as watches, mechanical movements to automatics, and they do quite well. There's a strong market for, for fine wrist watches. What would you evaluate this? Can you? I can't. I can tell you that it's a little earlier because it has an acrylic crystal as opposed to a sapphire crystal, mm -hmm. is which vintage, is yeah. indicative of an earlier Rolex. Okay, how about this, this silver? These are both sterling pieces. This is weighted, which means that it feels like it has a little bit of weight to it. It, mm -hmm. But in actuality, that's actually either sand, cement, anything to make it feel heavier than it really is. Okay. But it just doesn't look like much. Polished up, it would look a lot different. And there's value in silver depending upon who the maker is. We have had iced teaspoons by Tiffany & Company. Eight iced teaspoons, a pretty rare pattern, sell for as much as um, $5,000. Oh, wow. For just eight for iced just teaspoons. just eight spoons. And these little vases, this one is weighted, this one is not. Correct. The, sterling is very light. Very light, and it's also, as if we just dealt with the metal price right now because of the strength of the dollar, mm -hmm. the price of sterling silver is pretty pretty low today. Okay. Frankly, it's down to $14 an ounce, I think. So how would I know, I mean, if something's real or not? How do you know you, you get two or three items depending on the level that you come in with KVA? What, what do you bring? I would bring, if you think it's silver, bring it. If there's hallmarks on the underside, bring it. If it says EPNS or anything to indicate it's silver plate, mm -hmm. probably not worth bringing for one of your items because silver plate is typically you know, a hundred dollars or under for and the sterling most sterling usually part. says sterling on it. Generally, but not always. Okay. Sometimes right. nine two five one thousand. Sometimes just hallmarks. Okay. So every country has their own little way of, way of measuring silver. Okay. Thanks, Derek. Sure. We'll be spending more time with our friends from Clars during this brief intermission. But now is your opportunity to pick up that phone and call with your support. Thanks, Thanks so much, Rose. And we're back with Derek Clars and our longtime volunteer. This is Marion Porter. She's been here thirty years. So you get a free valuation tonight. <laughs> hey. So first of all, thank you for coming with this. Well, thank you very much for doing this. You were rolling teleprompter and you ran out I here was, to do this. I was, I was, yes. So tell us what you brought in and where it came from. I brought in two newspapers and we were going through my brother's house and he had to move to an apartment. So we found these and he had acquired a lot of artwork, mostly um, Folsom Prison inmate artwork, but then these were, these new papers were among the art that was there. So my relatives and I had discussions all weekend about, well, are they worth anything and, or are they not? Right. And well, you're asking the right history. person. Exactly. Right. So that's what we want to know. Sure. So I told them to tune in and let's see. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> all right. So this paper is? Philadelphia so, Inquirer. Philadelphia Inquirer. I believe that one is dated 1865, if it I'm is. not mistaken. And we have a Daily Examiner from San Francisco, 1887, in front of us. Correct. Both very cool and very historic. Oh, okay. You know, what we see with the age of the internet, what we thought was once uncommon, we okay. found was quite common. Okay. So there are a lot of publications out, and we get this question a lot at our valuations with folks coming in with, well, I have a chronicle from the 06 earthquake. Oh, really? Okay. Oh. And I, I mean, for me, I'm a California guy. I love California. I love everything about our state. I think we have a rich state. Yes. Um, but I only paid $75 for it. Okay. You know, but I still love it. You know, it's right. still a sense of history and, and what these things, who touched these? You so know, who you, got to read these? Can you put a worth on this? Um, I would say for the two, probably in the two to 400 range. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, 
What do you think? More than I, what I, I thought. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I thought. Because I went on the internet and, you know, it said papers aren't worth much anymore. Okay. And well, I'm glad so you got good news. I Thank did. you so much. Thank we'll you. We'll be returning to the Thanks. program all your help. Thanks. in just a moment. But now is your chance to call in the number on your screen and support the programs you love on KVIE. Such a fun event. We have it every single year. This is our fourth year, and we want you to take part. I'm, take part. I'm Rob Stewart, so pleased to be back in the studio uh, with our friends from Clars. And we're not auctioning Kermit right now. No, not Kermit. But what Kermit is sitting in is worth quite a lot of money. So is Kermit. Yes, priceless. Priceless, exactly. But tell us about this. What is this? This is an American rocking chair made by one of the 20th century's most important cabinet makers, at least in this country, Sam Maloof. Uh, he wow. was active in Los Angeles. Um, I guess the only cabinet maker that would be a competitor would be George Nakashima out of New Hope, Pennsylvania. But he was California's answer to... Nakashima and I think of although we all live with furniture and this is basically a piece of furniture it's also a piece of art. I well you look at it closely especially the fine elegant smooth lines right uh, the, the 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 pedestals in the back what are these called right the spindle the back spindles, thank you. and the yeah. arms are just so perfectly sculpted and the wood grain is highly figured Mr. Maloof made this for a close personal friend of his Mr. Um, Joseph Gatto, who was a patron of the arts. He was himself an artist. He was an educator and a promoter of arts down in Los Angeles. This rocker was executed in March of 1968 for his friend, Mr. Gatto. Okay, can you put a price on it? 22, 22 to 32,000. 22 to 32,000 for a rocking chair. A rocking chair. Get out. That is fascinating. Do you argue when you hear prices set on Antiques Roadshow? We actually like setting records at Clark's. I bet you do. We really do. We as a gallery enjoy that. You know, it, it helps It helps everything. So tell me about the million dollar clock. This is uh, uh, this is just fascinating. <laughs> Can we talk about this on air? Sure. I should have sure. asked you. Real quick, tell no, me the story because we don't have time. No, not a problem. Time. It was a private treaty sale that we, we the gallery did in October for a clock that was valued at $80,000 to $120,000 and mm -hmm. we sold it privately for a million dollars. Whoever that was, please join KVIE and consider our donations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. We'll be back more. And Rick has joined us again to tell us more about the exciting day, which we have right here in our studios. In fact, it's the studio next door, which is the largest in Northern California. Tell us, uh, did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, I learn something new every day, huh? <laughs> so tell us about what the day is like, because I've been here. It's really exciting. What's it like and what people should bring? It starts off very slowly. There's a line of people all excited to get into the place. Once they get in, they are put into whatever area that their merchandise goes into. Jewelry. Uh, jewelry, decorative arts, him. Jewelry, Gary, um, Asian art, Joyce, myself for fine art. Mm -hmm. um, you cover the gamut. We cover the gamut and it's, you know, everybody is talking and chatting and they're talking about like to their neighbor about what they have and what, you know, vice versa. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. Do I'm you sure. buy stuff that day? Right off of people? Do no, we don't. Stuff? We no, don't. I'm I mean, just curious. if somebody decides they want to consign, which mm -hmm. is selling it through Clars, mm -hmm. that's what we're there I got for it. that too. Yeah. You okay. know, it's if they like the price, and you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Cool, awesome. We'll have more from you guys in a minute. We're learning so much today about the process behind the evaluation. It's so much fun. And what you can experience when you call in and get tickets to the event, please pick up the phone and call right now. And thanks. Find out the value of your treasured treasures at KVIE's Antique Valuation Day in partnership with Clars Auction Gallery. For your generous gift of $7 a month as an ongoing sustaining donor, we'll say thanks with Covell's Antiques and Collectibles Price Guide, updated for 2016. This book is the most thorough, colorful, and complete price guide available from your trusted name in antiques. You'll also receive the KVIE Viewfinder DVD, Best of Collectors, with our thanks. Or to experience the excitement of a live antique evaluation, join us for the 2016 KVIE Antique Valuation Day on Saturday, May 14. Contribute $10 a month as an ongoing sustaining donor to receive admission to the event and two items professionally evaluated by specialists from Clars Auction Gallery or contribute $12.50 a month as an ongoing donor to receive three items professionally evaluated. Both ticket packages also come with a copy of the KVIE Viewfinder Best of Collectors DVD with our thanks. Space is limited, so call 1-800-270-6601 now to make a generous donation and reserve your space at KVIE's Antique Valuation Day.